Palestinian officials say they're taking steps to reduce reliance on Israel's economy. They're calling on international businesses to deal directly with Palestinian businesses. As part of this push, Palestinian Economy Minister Khaled Osseli was in Istanbul for the Organisation of Islamic Countries Investment Conference, where TRT World's Mobin Nasser asked him about the economic toll of the Israeli occupation. It's difficult to quantify the extent of the losses that the Palestinian economy is suffering as a result of the Israeli occupation. A report published by the World Bank in 2017 says the losses amount to roughly $48 billion. But I believe this only factors in the potential government revenues and a halt to some manufacturing activities. The real damage extends far beyond this tally. For example, another World Bank report says investment opportunities of about $3.4 billion have been lost in Zone C alone, and many of our business operations are obstructed by the blockade and by delays at checkpoints. So these numbers form only a fraction of the total losses suffered by the Palestinian economy. Now many Palestinians are suffering from shortages of water and electricity. What are the key areas where the government is trying to attract investments? First, the National Council and the Central Council of the Government have adopted a strategy to gradually decouple from the occupation economy. The Israeli occupation is a drain on our economy. Goods worth $5 billion pass through Israeli checkpoints, and they make money on this commerce. They make a profit out of the occupation. Our strategy is to get rid of the close ties to the Israeli economy. We are reaching out to Arab and Islamic countries, as well as our friends in the international community, to help us add depth to our trade. We want to diversify the markets for imports and exports. There are two parts to this strategy. First of all, we're encouraging the use of domestically produced goods. We've developed some advanced industries. We have a vibrant private sector which is investing in its own land and creating jobs. The government is also supporting them on an international level. Representatives from the private sector accompany all of our official delegations that go abroad. Second, we are requesting other countries to engage Palestinian businesses directly. In many industries, Israeli companies have had a monopoly, like in cement production. Since we've been importing cement from Turkey and Jordan, its price has fallen by more than 30 percent in Palestine. We're hoping to break other monopolies on such things as petrol and electricity supplies. Here, I would especially like to thank Turkey, whose brands like LC Waikiki, Cotton and Flow are dealing directly with Palestinian businesses. Despite the challenges they face, there are many very successful startups emerging from Palestine. What is the government doing to help them grow outside in the region and globally? There are many ways in which the government is supporting startups, as well as small and medium sized enterprises. We are changing and improving the Palestinian legal framework for companies. We're trying to facilitate new firms, especially to create more jobs. As I mentioned, representatives of businesses accompany our official foreign delegations. A week ago, one such delegation was in Russia, and it managed to sign some deals there.